Previously on Persona 4 Arena. Alright, so, it's been about five or six months, a good, a good amount of time, since we last uploaded a video of this. And, uh, as a result, I, I really just don't feel like going through the trouble of trying to find a clip in an old episode, so... Instead, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and give a quick rundown of what's happened so far. And, so that there's gonna be something on the screen, I don't know what I'll find. Uh, let's see, uh... Yep, perfect. Previously on Persona 4 Arena, we have returned to Inaba, just to celebrate Golden Week, Japan's version of Spring Break, with friends that we've made in the town and the loved ones that we have there. But as we come back, we see a commercial on the television and it shows us and our friends fighting each other, not quite so to the death, but more to the awkward conversations. And following the news that we found out about this, we then decide to jump into a TV and go into the TV world, which is where we end up making up inside of a high school. It is there that we have to fight each other, but we have awkward conversations first because our vision and our hearing is distorted or being controlled by the big General Teddy, a teddy bear that has a cap, a cane, and a fancy cape. Not too long after this, we end up running into Miss President of the high school that we are actually going through, and she tells us, hey, knock it off. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Okay, I believe you. Let's go find out whose fault it is then. And we go on an adventure together. Eventually we see her jump off the floor, go straight to the ceiling, and then kick off the ceiling, landing on full sprint and sprinting off into the distance, which we have to chase after her. As a result, we are now reaching to the point of where, I don't know, whatever's going on, but there's your rundown, and that's what's happened so far in the episode. Hope you all enjoy it, and hope you all enjoy the episode. And now back to your spin-off anime fighting game. I am Pump Squatch, hello and welcome back to Persona 4 Arena. Yeah, it's been about, uh, I don't know, five, six months. How'd you guys actually enjoy that intro that we gave in the minute, or in the beginning there? I honestly just didn't feel bothered to go back all those months ago and just try and find a game clip to just insert, so there we go, there's your intro. We've been about five or six months out of this game, but you know what, it doesn't matter. We've been almost a year, actually over a year, out of Persona 5, so congratulations, let's, let's get an applause everybody, yes, yes, a great applause, brand new low, brand new low, brand new low, I should really actually stop doing that, it's about 2 in the morning when I'm doing this, I really don't want to tick off my neighbors. So I really don't remember where we left off, so I'm just gonna assume that we left off with Chi. oh no. And matter. Very well. I hope that this is the right one. It wasn't. Ah, oh, that really sucks. Well, time to do it all over again. No joke, I've tried to do this like five or six times already. Uh, let's see, where's the fast forward? Uh, quick skip. There we go. Yes. Hurry up. And then this happened, then that happened, and then we heard from Teddy, and then we heard from Yosuke. Okay, now we're not gonna place a bookmark. So, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, it's 2 in the morning right now, so it's only been 2 hours into today for me. I'm gonna skip that. But, I don't know, it's actually going alright. I mean, I had a nice glass of water. I couldn't sleep. I felt like actually recording this game. And then we went to Juness. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm just trying to kill time with my boredom, and you guys are having to suffer through uh, with me. So, gonna skip through that cutscene as well. And we're gonna go to the Velvet Room. Gonna go have a nice thud as we have the... Lifeless body sit there. And then, uh, is say Uh, something like that. Cool, let's skip again. Alright, and then with that, we're gonna be into our first fight, and I will see you guys after that. Is my Elgato magic? What do you guys think? Oh, and there's a uh, Miss President Waifu. But yeah, do you guys have any sort of, like, explanation for why that's happening? Because sometimes my Elgato, my Elgato will completely just cut off the audio feed to the TV. I could still hear it through the uh, computer device itself, but sometimes it'll either just cut it off, or if I try to turn down the volume on the TV, when it's sending it through to the TV, it'll just ignore that completely and be like, yeah, no, we have other plans. <laughs> Whoa, what the heck? I don't know why, but it seems like... What the heck? The game is slow! What is going on? Now that is new. The game is slow. I wonder if that's just my Xbox showing its, uh, showing its age, though. Let's see if that happens in the next fight. Ah, oh, crud. Was it before or after the fight was done that we finished recording? Dang it! Ah! 
Oh my gosh, why is it so slow? And it's not even the frame rate, it's just everything is happening in slow motion. What is going on? Okay, yeah, it was after the fight's done, after we give chase to Miss President. That's right, that's what happened. Also, she somehow jumped off the floor, straight, like, standing straight up. She jumped off the ground and went straight to the ceiling where she could push off the ceiling. And oh my gosh, guys, I figured out what's going on with her. It's not anything just inhuman. It's just that she has thick thighs. And what do you know it? Thick thighs truly do save lives. All right, let's actually get on with the game. Even though I was running as fast as I could, the invisible walls keep preventing me from making much headway. I attempted to strike at the walls with my persona, but nothing happened. So many invisible walls, one after another. This president can pass through them. I don't know if I can keep up the pursuit. And that's really weird, because... The fight scenes, they're, they move in like slow motion, but this is just... It's completely different, it's just completely natural. Everything is going at a normal pace, but the fights, they, they're just like... I wouldn't say lagging, but... I don't know how else to describe it, just like a slow-mo. The announcement room I mean, the announcement room is still my destination. There's no way to know if that's where Miss President is headed as well. But if there's a shadow waiting for me there, I'll need to get there anyways. Teddy and Risei should be in the announcement room, and if Nanako is being held captive, that's where she'd be too. I have to keep running, but yet another wall blocks the hallway. At first, I think that this is a dead end. I realize that I can cut through a classroom and come out the other side of the wall. It's forcing me to enter the room, rather than letting me go straight. That probably means... I brace myself and put my hand on the door. The moment I step inside, a familiar voice echoes in my mind. Hi. Senpai! Can you hear me? Please answer me! Risei? Risei! That voice... Is that you, Risei? The real- Oh! Sorry! Uh... Let's see... Is that you, Risei? The real one? My voice acting isn't great, but I'll try. Her voice isn't coming from the PA system. I'm actually hearing it in my head. Oh my gosh. That Doki Doki stream from a year ago is still haunting me today. I still need to finish it. It keeps telling me, Pop Squatch, you need to finish the game. Come back. No, no, not again. Not another stream. In all honesty, I probably should finish that game though. This has to be the work of Risei's persona. Thank goodness. I've been all alone since that weird fake Teddy captured me. Idol Waifu! And then you were all fighting each other. It's okay. We'll get you out of here, Idol Waifu. Or Risei. Whatever your name is. I can hear the relief in her voice. She sounds so different from the incentive and root voice that has been coming from the PA system. This is indeed the Risei I know. Where are you now, Risei? Can you locate where I am? I'm sorry, I don't think there's time. I'm stuck in the announcement room. Please, Senpai, you have to hurry. If you don't, he'll... Risei, no! Risei! Risei! What's wrong, Risei? Oh, boy. There is no answer. The communication has been cut off. Has something happened in the announcement room? My heart begins racing. The enemy made us fight each other as participants in this tournament, but they had captured Risi as well. It's clear to me that they must have been worried about her using her persona's power to tell us the truth. But that's not important right now. What's important is saving her. What's important is saving everyone from this horrible nightmare. If she was just captured to prevent her from contacting us, then the enemy must think of Risi as being less valuable than those who had to fight. She sounded okay, but who knows what might happen to her now? Uh, I have to hurry. Pardon me for interrupting while you are lost in thought. Huh? <laughs> A hand brushes my shoulder. In surprise, I jump away and draw my sword. I can't believe I let myself get so lost in thought that I didn't know notice someone until they touched me. This is the second time I've let that happen to myself. This is the second time I've let myself get so distracted. 
I've gotten used to having my friends with me while we investigated last year. I can't pay attention to the entire world on my own. I need to brace myself. Anything could be going on. Anything at all. Oh, that's right. Anything could be going on. You're going into madness, slipping away just by the fingertips. And now you will fight your toaster oh, to burn your bread and eventually summon Thanatos. Oh! Okay, okay, I get it. I, I get it, Bendy. I'm going to fight my toaster, burn my bread, and summon Thanatos. Yes, I know how the meme goes. Alright then, time to fight my toaster. I look up and see another unfamiliar face. A girl with blonde hair and striking blue eyes. Wait, a girl? Her face and voice seem human-like, but the rest of her... There's metal everywhere. All over her body. For a moment, I wonder if this is just an elaborate costume. But I can see the interior framework of her body where her joints connect. Is this... Safe for work? I didn't mean to startle you. You're... um... It's nice to meet you. My name is Igis. And no, I am not human. Good to know. You are the one from the introduction video, listed as... The Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel. Uh... Oh, that's right. I forgot. That is a thing that happened. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the question catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting to have a complete stranger call me that. And... Did she say she wasn't human? It's... Well... When Yosuke calls me by that stupid title, I knew it was a joke. But when a stranger says it... It sounds like they truly believe it, and... Ooh, yikes. That stings. <laughs> this is a pain. Uh, Nanako is important to me, but calling it a complex is stretching things. What do you think this is? Anime? No, wait a second. I was trying to play it off, but I ended up blurting out Nanako's name anyways. Oh no, this really may be anime. Calm down. I need to take this conversation away from this subject before I get my own harem. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! I clear my throat and try to start over. Igasan, was it? Why are you here? Our primary objective is the destruction of shadows, but we have come to this world on a different mission. Mm-hmm. The destruction of shadows. Okay. She fights shadows. But how can she do that if... And does that mean... Yes. I have a persona as well. Oh! Though my body is a machine, personas are the strength of the heart after all. Interesting. See, I've never played Persona 3 and I know that's where she's from. So I don't know the lore and reasoning behind it. Like, did, did somebody just take a normal human part and decide... Yes, this will have a persona of this kind of arcana. You will guide us into the future. Igasan! Now, put it in the toaster! Just as I thought. I'm surprised to find another persona user outside of my group of friends. And a robot on top of that. I can't come to grips with all of this. From the way we were talking, she seems just like a normal person, only in an interesting suit. True, I've seen stories on the news about robots looking uncannily like real humans, but isn't something like this far beyond those? Still, I can't help but believe the evidence of my own eyes. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of TVs for the past year. Who am I to say what's strange or not? Perhaps the technology behind her creation has supernatural roots of its own? I find myself growing more and more interested in how she came to be here. But I have to put that aside for now. I will discover the meaning of toasters later. For now, I must fight my toaster. Yeah, this is an actual thing that's going on by the way.
There's something I need to find out from her first. This P1 Grand Prix. It's so similar to the events of last year. But to think that it would be involving someone like her. I don't have a clear picture of everything that's going on, that's for sure. I calm myself, then ask her what I feel would tell me what she's doing in this world. And what is this mission of yours? She opens her mouth to respond, but just then. The monitor inside the classroom turns on. Oh, look who it is. Oh! It's at that moment that I suddenly remember. It's likely that I'm going to have to fight here. I had forgotten about sensing that when I entered the room. Oh, boy. Aha! So that's where you got to, Sensei. I've been looking all over for you. Uh-huh. Who's the honey? Were you in the middle of trying to score with her? You were supposed to fight her, not date her. Shut up. Shut up. I'm not dating. I'm fighting. Shut up. Look, it's a toaster. I got my sword. I'm going to poke it. See, the toaster is poked. Oh, God. Oh, gosh, it shocked me back. As if you didn't know, you're the one who lured us both here. Oh my, did you figure it out? I didn't have a choice after those guys decided on their own to horn in on the fun. Hmm? You're a fun boy, Sensei. You know what's coming next, don't you? Let me guess. I'm gonna fight my toaster. You're gonna fight your toaster? The general on the monitor gives me a twisted smile. Could Igasan's mission be something that would cause him trouble? I can't figure out what his motives are, but he's using us to crush each other. In other words, she's the next challenger that's being set against me. Igasan seems to understand this as well, and is staring at the monitor with a quiet animosity. Sorry about this. Do you know the rule of this tournament? Only the victor of each match may move on. Yes? I have nothing against you, but I'm in a hurry for my own reasons. I'm sorry, but I can't hold back. Neither of us, in other words, can back down. Then there should be no hard feelings. Agreed. Igasan is refreshingly straightforward about this. She immediately takes a fighting stance. A bitter thought comes to me. It's tough being forced to fight my friends, but for some reason, having hurt someone that I don't even know is tougher. Another thought comes at the heels of that one. I don't know this girl. Perhaps her appearance here means that there are some urgent problems in it that ordinary student like me can't fathom. What gives me the right to stop her on her mission? Shouldn't I know what's at stake before I take that from her? Thankfully, it seems that she hasn't gone mad like my other friends. Perhaps the enemy doesn't care about clouding the minds of people who don't know each other. If we're still capable of understanding each other, then we should be able to talk this over before we do anything. That will not do. We will speak more of this after one of us wins. Huh? Why? We could probably work together on this. Well, I'm sure we're gonna find out why anyways. Igasan says this so quickly, it's as if she was reading my mind. For a moment, I'm struck by how she could have known what I was thinking, but... I realize that she's right. What good would it do for us to talk things over? True, the loser can't leave this room, but until we have a battle, neither one of us is going anywhere. Uh, I guess that's true. It doesn't really matter if we can come to an understanding or not. Until we have our fight, none of our goals are going to be accomplished. If that's the case, then it's better if we don't hear, hear about each other's problems before we fight. That could be why Igasan hasn't told me anything. This must be her version of kindness. I silently ready my sword. Igasan appear- Igasan appears to smile slightly when I do. Right. I'm not going to give up on what I'm fighting for either. I need Nanako and my friends to be safe. And I have to make sure that Miss President is okay. I will use everything I can to protect them. 
to thank her for her consideration. I make it a point to announce that I'm ready to start the fight. And here goes. There's no need to hold back. Heck yeah! Indeed. Let us do battle. I'm ready. Let the battle begin. Nope. All right, let's do this. Toaster versus protagonist. Finally. Is it gonna run slow again? Fight. I yeah. yeah, it is. Uh oh, no, 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 no! Oh, that hurt. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, well, that sucks. Oh, wait. There we go, we won. Yeah, I'll go ahead and place a bookmark there. Huh, what do you know? I actually tried this like two months ago. I actually tried this like three months ago. Huh. Alright then. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh, I, I just got shot. Uh, <laughs> I just... Why? Why did you shoot a high school student? Why? Ah. There. I fought my toaster. Can I go to the hospital now? Please, I'm dying. I got shot like 30 times. <laughs> Serves you right. Keep suffering. Ah, oh, you suck. Friend against friend, beating the heck out of each other. A machine with the power of a persona. She was made to fight shadows, but I had no idea what she was capable of. And apparently had a freaking gun in her arm! A Gatling gun at that! I feel like my mind's been drained even more than my body. It angers me to see that the general is watching over us with such an expression of joy. As if we were some performers for his amusement. I look up and glare at the monitor. I don't know why you're making us fight, but it's pointless. We aren't fighting because we hate each other. The reason we can fight is because we respect and trust each other. That's right. We know we'll be okay in the end. I'm, I mean, this toaster shot me, but you know what? I'm fine. It's just a flesh wound. I'll be fine. A low growl. Oh. That's the only sound I hear. Huh? The real Teddy's never made such a hateful sound. It's actually rather scary. Stupid! You're such a dumbass! Oh. What's with you? Oh, ho, 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 ho. ah, you slipped up. The image on the monitor distorts along with the outburst. The general is having trouble remembering to act as someone else, and his face bulges and ripples disturbingly as his hate pours through the screen. Any pretense of copying the adorable stupidity of the real Teddy is gone now. The adorable stupidity, ah, yes. I notice that the voice spitting out these hateful words is not Teddy's either. Respect? Trust? So what if you don't hate each other? You're not like me! That... voice... sounds familiar... I was forced to fight against my will! I destroyed them with my own hands! You should all have to go through that hell I suffered! Everyone you call a friend. That's a distorted voice of the like Miss President. Yeah. Oh, it's her shadow. That's right. It's her shadow that's doing this. It. It. That's. Oh my gosh. That's right. Oh. Uh, it's Miss President's shadow that's causing all this to happen. It's ca it's what's causing us to fight. Trying to distort the things we see and hear. And trying to cosplay as like a 
general version of Teddy, General Teddy. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a twist that everyone probably saw coming. If I knew this was gonna happen, I would have made the rules so you had to kill your opponent to move on. The general on the monitor continues to rage. What are you talking about? Why did you set this tournament up? The moment I say that, I feel that all the dots have become connected. When Miss President had asked out of the blue if we were going to be forced to kill each other. That ominous muttering of killing one another. Were these both something that had to come directly from her past? Maybe she had been forced to fight against people she didn't want to fight. Had she been forced to destroy something that was precious to her? There is no way to know for sure, but it's possible. Considering this, it kind of explains why her shadow should ha w uh, bleh, would have created a tournament like this. That is, she wanted us to feel what she went through. I might not be entirely correct, but I feel like I'm close to the truth. Should I just ask General Teddy about my suspicions? But as I'm considering raising my voice... Pardon what my the? eccentric entrance. Hello? What? Uh, hi? Someone comes crashing through the bloody ceiling! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What in the world? Uh, I, I give up. I rush over to Aigasan to protect her from falling debris, even though I'm probably gonna be a lot more fragile since I just got shot. Oh yeah! Oh, this song! Boom Madrid. Boom Madrid. Boom Madrid! Boom Madrid. Boom Madrid. Oh, this song, it's so good! Uh, one thing about Persona for sure is that you cannot deny. They know how to make some dang good music. Look, listen to this. Oh, uh, get a lotus juice! Get it, Lotus Juice! Dang! Oh my gosh, I love that music! I love that song, I legitimately do. Uh, I, I gotta keep going though, I gotta keep going with the game. When I look up, I see a young woman emerge from the cloud of dust. While not as strange as I guess, she seems a little uncommon as well. But even beside that, why did she have to come through the ceiling? This room has doors! I'm staring at them as we speak. I'm staring at them as we speak. It makes no sense at all! I had been about to get to the heart of the matter with General Teddy, but the monitor in this room has been completely destroyed. Along with the rest of the ceiling. Although she seems oblivious to my confusion, the girl cocks her head and apologizes again. Oh, please excuse me. I didn't have the faintest idea that someone would be here. Well, hello. Faintest? Faint? Huh? Fiend? <laughs> Something along those lines at any rate. <laughs> Alright then. Boom Madrid. Some Thanatos. Boom Madrid. Boom Madrid. Boom Madrid. Gonna boom my bread. 
and summon Thanatos to oof, psh, psh, burn my brain. What the hell is she talking about? Who in the world is this person? Hmm, wait a second. That blue suit she's wearing, it looks familiar. And with that silver hair and golden eyes, could it be? Are you from the Velvet Room? My, is this what's known as being hit on? No, it's not. A forbidden ritual where one human approaches another based solely on appearance and bets on the inner self being equally attractive. Oh, here we go again. Boom, boom, Madrid. Burn my bread. Summon then a toast. Ah. Okay, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no, that's not what it is at all. What? No, I'm not hitting on you. <laughs> you just remind me of someone I know. Okay, so that actually sounded like I was really hitting on her. No, I need to stop thinking about that. I- this isn't anime. I don't have a harem. Do I? Okay. In any case, I need to ask her something. Do you happen to know anyone by the name of Margaret? Margaret? And she repeats the name, her face seems surprisingly youthful. I'd been taken aback by... I'd been taken aback by her bizarre speech and actions, but could this girl be younger than me? Her profile simultaneously invokes the images of a pondering philosopher and an innocent girl. I can't figure out how exactly to speak to her. Should I be more polite? I guess that doesn't matter too much, considering she just blew through the freaking ceiling. Anyway, worrying about the niceties isn't the most important thing right now. Oh, actually, we should introduce ourselves first. I'm Yu Narukami. Hello. Ah, that had slipped my mind also. My name is Elizabeth. Dear me, to hear that name fraught with memories in such a mundane remote place. Huh? She thinks of this word as a mu- She thinks of this world as a mundane place? That's confusing. Yasuo Inaba may be out of the out in the countryside, but I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. The girl, Elizabeth, suddenly bows elegantly to me. Margaret is indeed my sister's name. Can I take that to mean that you are another guest of that room? Yep. I see. So she's Margaret's sister. That would explain why she reminds me of her so much. I guess. Elizabeth son, huh? Yep. Well, I guess that's the case. It's true that there was a time when I visited that room. Igor, Margaret, and now Elizabeth. It seems that there are more people who call that place home than I thought. I think I'm glad I met Margaret last year instead of this girl, though. But why is a resident of the Velvet Room here? Did Margaret send you with a message or something? I am currently utterly neglecting my duties. Okay then. <laughs> good role model, guys. Good waifu, good role model. Okay then. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. That doesn't really tell me much, and I have no response anyway. So, what possessed her to come blasting in through the ceiling instead of using the door? When there are two of them. I decide not to bother asking her that, because I feel like it would just make my headache worse. I've met so many different people over the last year, but trying to have a conversation with this girl is like trying to ride a wild horse. She's just going to ignore any direction that I'm trying to steer us towards and just veer off wherever she wants. Just to just hold on and go along for the ride then. Maybe if I pay attention she'll tell me something worth my time. Even if I try to ask her any questions, she'll likely just be confused anyways. Just as I'm having this thought, the girl seems to have noticed my hesitation and starts to talk about herself. Her eyes are lit up with a sincere passion. She 
It really is a hard one to read. I have a certain desire. It may take a very long time for it to be realized. And what is that? In order for my wish to be granted, I require a power much greater than what I have. Uh huh. The power of the wild card that changes bonds into string. I have a feeling that the key lies there. Okay. I know a little about the wild card, but I'm not sure it'll be of any use. I feel that the first glue to granting my wish lies within that power. Mm hmm. Glue? Blue? Huh? Influenza. Excuse me? Something along those lines, at any rate. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just accepting this as it just comes to us. She's having trouble coming up with the right words, but I can hear the sincerity in her speech. Probably. I don't know anymore. In other words, I think she means that the power of the wild card is related to her desire, and she just came here and there we go, big bang boom, she broke the roof, she's cut off my conversation with General Teddy. Point is, I fought my toaster, and now I'm speaking to this random girl here who didn't decide to use the doors and just blew through the ceiling. There we go. That's Persona for the night, everybody. That's Persona. I don't think it's worth it to ask how she knew I had that power or where she found out about it. Just as I'm struggling to follow the misleading path of her conversation, she brings up an outrageous suggestion. Might I suggest that you and I fight? Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? It's what the game is. I... what? Someone please tell me how she reached that conclusion that it was a good idea. I don't think I have a chance of talking her out of it, though. But, of course, I have to try, so I say... We're going to fight?! Oh, how excited this is making me! My expectations are ascending skyward at muck speed! Uh... That's... that's great. To be direct, I'd like for you to show me the potential slumbering within you. Okay. Um, let me make sure of something, just in case. You understand what I'm saying, right? There's no illusions at work? Such parlor tricks can get stuffed! <laughs> okay then. Um, I, I don't think there's any, any illusions going on here. I see. So you're actually in your right mind here. That's kind of... Uh, impressive. Yeah. Well, maybe she understood what I meant when I mentioned the illusions. If that's so, then she at least must have some idea of what's going on around here. And even though she might understand it, she still wants to fight me. I wonder though, if she's unrelated to General Teddy's plans and invited herself into the tournament, do the usual rules apply? That's a good question, actually. Do they apply? Let's find out. As I think about this, Elizabeth Son taps her foot on the ground and takes a fighting posture. She readily does what? Uh, she readily, she really does want to fight. Lovely. The huge leather bound, the huge leather bound book in her hand opens as if by itself. Ooh. A torrent of power pours from the open book, like a blue light with a blue light. I can't believe that this strange girl has such unimaginable power. She seems so aloof. No, it may be more correct to call it an air of imminent violence. Alright, I won't be able to hold back. Otherwise we're gonna die! To be honest, I was really only saying that in hopes of bluffing her. I have absolutely no room to hold back in this fight. I hurriedly cast off my fears and focus on the upcoming battle. There's no room for doubt. I need to hit her with my full strength, from the start. Even if I were to fight her with the intent to kill, I'll be lucky not to end up dead myself. At least, that's how I feel. Elizabeth Song calmly begins the battle. Let us do this. Your fate is in the cards! Oh, well that must be your catchphrase. Alright guys, well I'm gonna have to go ahead and end that episode there. Uh, I, I hope to get this episode up in, I don't know, the next 24 hours or less, hopefully. Maybe I'll launch it alongside the Persona 5 episode. If I could, that would actually be the, des the desirable uh, uh, outcome, and that would be what I want to start doing at the very least. I want to release 
Persona 5 and Persona 4 Arena alongside each other and Yakuza Kiwami with Psychonauts alongside each other as well, but I'm probably going to be cutting them down to about half an hour each, so it'll only be one hour of footage worth each time I upload, but it will be different games, it will be more games, so hopefully that could, I don't know, be something that would interest you guys, be a little bit easier for me to manage at the same time, but hey, we'll see. I'm going to be trying out some new stuff, and I just hope it'll go well. Anyways guys, thank you all very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video or the content within, feel free to leave a like, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below, as well as let me know what was your first introduction to Persona. Uh, honestly for me it was the Persona 4 anime, and from that it just, <laughs> it just took off man, I'm not gonna lie, it just, it took off. But, I'm looking forward to reading the comments, seeing what you guys thought of it, what do you guys think of this game in particular, and please, no spoilers. Anyways guys, thank you all very much for watching, really do appreciate it. If you if you want to have notifications of future uploads and streams just like this one brought straight to you as they go live, make sure you hit that subscribe button, become a Squatchkin today. Thank you all very much for watching, and as always, I am Pump Squatch. goodbye.